Morning guys. Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to show you the process now of how I set up my CNC. So this is how I start my CNC every day when I'm doing a job. So the first process is I have to turn the computer on, which is in this little cupboard. And the reason why it's in this little cupboard is so that the computer brain and the computer don't suck up all the dust. Even though you can see I have dust extraction, still the fine particles can affect your software. So that is a standard base unit, a thousand kits unit. And I have put a worked up on it and made it sealed so that basically none of the dust gets into any of the brain. Then the second thing is I then uh, make this live by turning on the brain. You might have heard a click then, and that means that the power has gone to the router and the fans kicked in. So that is now live. So the next thing is you load up your programs. Everyone's got their own programs. Mine happens to be Mac 3. I like Mac 3, so I use Mac 3. Then the next thing you do is you press reset. So that whatever you were doing yesterday, you're telling the computer now, I'm back to work, I want to restart my day, so you press reset first. Then you load your code. So this is a, a code I've made on uh, another program, uh, which is called Aspire. So I've made this pocket, we call it a pocket. So this is a pocket of, of table and my machine um, has now got that information, it's called a G-code. So that G-code now is going into the brain of Mac 3, and Mac 3 is all the X, Y, and Z elements of this machine. So now that's gonna be loaded in, which it is. Then I have to tell the router to go home. So I've now told it to go home, and home is over here. So what that does then is it reconfigures all the X, Y's and Z's to start from naught, which is what it's doing now. Obviously I've just got to help the hose sometimes, the hose you know, gets a bit caught up, but it sorts itself out. It's a simple design. You can hear there's quite a lot of rubbish in there. I'll empty that while you see it. Empty that on the floor. All the uh, resin, resin particles. It's always a good good time now to check your check your route of it. And I'm using carbide, and I'm using a 12 mil shaft with a 12 mil four flute cutter. That's what I'm using to face my um, table tops. Um, and the reason why I'm using that is because other sort of uh, router bits like let's just say a two flute cutter on a quarter, six mil, eight mil collet hasn't got the mustard really and the cost effectiveness to cut the resin uh, consistently. So I use carbide because it's what everybody uses in, in the industrial CNC world and I just think it, it clears out the material better and it cuts a lot smaller, so you're not sanding so much when it comes to the final stages, so it, it's a better way of doing it. <coughs> Excuse me, so I'll just give it a bit of TF90, a bit of a clean, make sure it's all okay, make sure it's all present, which it is. Put the dust extractor back on. Now I'm going to tell Mac 3, my program, where this is on the CNC. 
So everything's green, it's all back to zero. So X, Y, Z are all at zero. So now I'm going to move Y. X. To basically the corner of my table or project. And I'm going to tell the system that Mac 3 that Y is now at zero. I'm then going to tell it that X is at zero. Now, for one of the questions I get asked sometimes is how do you set your depth, Ryan? Well, what I use is this aluminium um, spacer, which is 12 mil thick. So I use this, 12 mil thick. And what that does is it tells Mac 3 that when I press naught, that it's 12 mil away from starting. Okay, so that's that's my point. So what I need to do now is basically set the depth on here, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to move it from from X. I'm going to move it down. I'm going to tell the router that this is naught because we did a bit of a we had a bit of an issue yesterday where the material was um, far greater than the cutter, so I had to sort of stop it and then lift it up again and take that top area off if that makes sense. Because what you don't want to do is put your router through so much stress, you can hear it when you're using it. Um, and basically, you only need to take two mil off. You don't go straight in there and take, you know, four or five mil off. You just burn your tools out. So it's the same process as if you're using a ham router, you can hear when it's struggling. It's the same with a CNC machine. You have to treat this tool, this massive bench tool, like you would your hand tools. You can't just go straight in there, guns blazing, I'm a sight carpenter, I'm a bench joiner, I know what I'm doing. You have to really slow down, and that's why I use my motto, the slower you go, the faster you go. Basically, just take it easy. So now I'm gonna tell it that Z is at zero. So Z is the router cutter. So I've now done. Um, I'm going to now check that I'm happy with that depth. I'm going to tell it to go to zero. So zero is the starting point of where the cutter cuts your material. So I'm going to tell it to go to zero now. I'm going to make sure I'm not cutting any more off than what it should be. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to tell it to start. So this this then this then is where you cannot hear me anymore. So what I'm going to say is I then turn my extractor on, which you'll hear. And um, I turn the extractor on and then that process is it. That's how I start the machine. So literally now I can leave that. I can go onto the bench, which I will do and I'll show you what I'm making whilst this is working. So I'm now going to turn the extractor on. Now you can't really hear me, but that's a three phase fine dust extractor system that I've built to solely take away all that horrible nasty dust. So now I'm going to make the CNC work for me for another 12 hours today. Guys. 
So yeah guys, so now I'm going to turn this into a window and um, I've done all my machining yesterday. I don't know if you saw my other videos. I've got a handmade Festool uh, router table, spindle molder, whatever you want to call it. So this was uh, made, the router was made by Festool and I have Ryan'd and engineered a router top for me and I have created my molding. So I'm matching this existing sash window. Um, so I've used my cutters to match it and then I've machined using the table saw to do the glazing part and then the detail I've used in my router table there. So I'm now going to make this all fit together. That's my job. I can get on with that confidently knowing that my CNC machine is set properly. It's working away. The dust extraction system is working and I'm confident that that now can do that leave me to get on with other things in the shop so not only is a CNC beneficial to your business it's very very economical for me because it's cheaper than an employee it will work 12 hours a day and it will do so many more jobs other than you I mean one day I'll be able to make a sash window on that thing when I learn how to do it but you know this is year I'm in year three with the CNC now and this year I'm developing it um, I don't know if you noticed the base was a little bit empty it's because I'm going to make um, the whole existing base lower down um, literally um, so I can put any lumber any timber slab in there any thickness and my CNC can face it and make it a table so um, watch more videos of mine please subscribe to my channel and like and comment I love the comments um, they really help me because it means that people are actually watching my videos and remember the slower you go the faster you go, have a great day.